Perspective. The dictionary defines it as a particular attitude toward or way of regarding something, a point of view, true understanding of the relative importance of things, a sense of proportion. I think that having a sense of perspective is important, and that is why I am making this video. Why is it important? Having a sense of perspective widens our understanding of our surrounding environment and allows us to make discoveries that will ultimately help us on our quest for knowledge. In this video I'm going to offer a little bit of perspective by making various comparisons. I'll also relate all these comparisons back to humans so that we can see where we sit in the universe. Let's start by looking at animals. After all, we're just another animal living on this planet. The average human is 1.62 meters tall and weighs 70 kilograms. For us, that's considered normal, but what about other animals? How do we compare to them? Well, one of the smallest mammals in the world is this, a white-toothed pygmy shrew. A fully grown adult can get to be 4 centimeters long and weigh 1.3 grams. This means that it would take about 40 of these shrews tail to snout in a line to equal the length of one average human. Also, we would need about 53,850 white-toothed pygmy shrews in a pile to equal the weight of one average human. Looking at this, we humans are pretty big. What about compared to larger animals, though? The blue whale is the largest mammal and the largest animal on the Earth. They can measure up to 33 meters in length and weigh up to 180,000 kilograms. It would take just over 20 average humans head-to-toe to equal the length of just one blue whale. How many humans to equal the weight? about 2,570. Now how big do we look? The way we see ourselves is all about perspective. How you look at the situation. Let's take a look at some other animals and compare their abilities to humans. Starting with smell, I'll compare humans to dogs. Humans have an olfactory membrane, the area where smells are detected, of 4 square centimeters. Dogs, on the other hand, have an olfactory membrane of 150 square centimeters. Their olfactory membrane is 37.5 times larger than ours. Here's an example of how much larger that is. Here's a delicious piece of pie that we can smell from about 3 meters away. Given the right conditions, the dog could smell the same piece of pie from about 112 meters away. Sounds pretty good, right? How about this? A silkworm moth can detect pheromones up to 11 kilometers away from their source. Not only that, they can detect one molecule of pheromone in 100 quadrillion molecules of air. That's 17 zeros. For comparison, humans can detect about one in several billion concentration. That's only nine zeros. How about another sense? Touch. We feel when something stimulates the nerves in our body. This way we can only feel when we come in contact with something. Manatee, however, don't have to be touching an object to feel it. Their bodies are covered in tiny little hairs that can detect the smallest changes in water temperature and pressure. How about taste? Humans have on average 10,000 taste buds. Sounds like a lot. Catfish have about 100,000. What about hearing then? Before I compare humans to other animals, I'll briefly explain how we hear. Sound is created when an object moves or vibrates, creating pressure waves. These waves then enter our ears and vibrate our eardrums, which vibrate three bones in our inner ear. The vibrations then travel through the cochlea, in which are thousands of little hairs that respond to vibrations. Certain hairs can detect certain frequencies. The frequency is how often these vibrations are. We measure this using hertz. One hertz is one vibration per second. The lower the frequency, the lower the pitch we hear. So certain hairs can hear this note, and other hairs can hear this note. Humans can hear sounds between 20 Hz and 20,000 Hz. Bats can hear sounds between 3,000 and 120,000 Hz. Mice can hear sounds between 1,000 Hz and 100,000 Hz. And elephants can hear sounds between 1 Hz and 20,000 Hz. Pigeons can hear sounds as low as 0.1 Hz. There's a ton of stuff we're not hearing, and there's a ton of stuff other animals aren't hearing either. Now what about sight? Judging from what you've seen so far, how do you think humans differ from some other animals? Before I go into that, however, I'll explain a little bit about what light is and how we see. The electromagnetic spectrum is a grouping of radiation levels of different energy. The largest waves in the spectrum are radio waves, which have the lowest energy and the largest wavelength, which is the distance between two peaks in the wave. In the case of radio waves, the wavelength could be about one meter. Gamma rays, on the other hand, have the highest energy and the smallest wavelength. 
about one picrometer. The light we see is only a small fraction of the entire spectrum. Visible light ranges from about 400 to 750 nanometers, or 4 times 10 to the negative 7 to 7.5 times 10 to the negative 7. The sun and stars are actually emitting radiation of all frequencies, but we can only see a small portion of them. Now, how we see. The light enters our eye and is focused onto the retina by the lens. The retina contains about 126 million photoreceptors which can detect the light and send a signal to our brain. There are about 120 million rods which are sensitive to light levels, and about 6 million cones which are sensitive to colors. Now, how does our sight differ from that of other creatures? Well, birds of prey such as hawks, eagles, and falcons have incredibly good eyesight compared to ours. Perfect vision for a human is 20-20. Hawks have 25 vision, which means that they can see from 20 feet what we can only see from 5. A fountain can see an object of 10 centimeters from a distance of 1.5 kilometers. And the visual acuity, the clearness of vision, of an eagle can be from 2 to 3.6 times better than that of a human. A bird like the buzzard can even see 6 to 8 times better than humans. The main reason for this is that raptors, along with many other birds, have a lot more receptors in their retina. Here's another type of bird, a penguin. Penguins can actually see into the ultraviolet range of the electromagnetic spectrum, and their eyes work better underwater than on land. Squids actually have incredibly good eyesight compared to humans. Not only do they have hundreds of times more photoreceptors, but their photoreceptors are on the right side of the retina. Let me explain. In a human eye, the light has to go through a layer of blood vessels and cells in order to get to the receptors which are actually pointing inward towards the brain. In a squid, the light enters the eye and BAM! hits the photoreceptors right away. Because of this, squids can see their surroundings and prey in extremely low light conditions, such as the bottom of the ocean. Speaking of water, did you know that some fish can see into the infrared range of the electromagnetic spectrum? Same goes for snakes. You see, there's a lot more to life than what meets the eye. There's more to the universe than animal senses, so let's talk about speed. For the most part, we're used to seeing things move at certain speeds and moving at certain speeds ourselves, so in order to see the whole picture, we have to step outside the box, remove ourselves from the situation, so to speak. The brown garden snail is the slowest land animal with its match speed at .05 km per hour. Pretty slow compared to a human walking at several kilometers per hour. What about the fastest human? That would be Usain Bolt, who can run at a speed of about 10.4 meters per second, or 37.4 km per hour. Now that's pretty fast compared to the average human, and especially compared to the snail. Let's keep going. The fastest land animal is the cheetah, which can reach speeds of 120 km per hour. And the fastest animal in the world is the peregrine falcon, which has been recorded to dive at speeds of up to 322 km per hour. The fastest land vehicle ever created is the Thrust SSC, which can travel at 1,223.7 km per hour. The speed of sound in dry air at 20 degrees Celsius and at 1 atmospheric pressure is just a little bit faster at 1,235.5 km per hour. The fastest manned, air-breathing vehicle is the SR-71 Blackbird, which can fly at 3,529.6 km per hour. Air-breathing means that it's working on jet engines that use air, not rocket engines. The fastest rocket-powered aircraft is NASA's S-43A, which can fly at about 9.6 times the speed of sound at altitude, 11,860.8 km per hour. One more for now, and that's the orbital speed of the International Space Station. Its average speed is about 7.67 km per second, or 27,612 km per hour. Wow, now that's fast. How about a little race to see how far each of these can travel in 5 seconds? Let's see how far each of these went. In descending order, the space station traveled 38.35 kilometers, the X-43A traveled 16.5 kilometers, and the Blackbird was able to travel 4.9 kilometers, the Soundwave was able to get 1.716 kilometers, and the Thrust SSC came in at 1.699 kilometers, the Falcon was able to dive 447.2 meters, and the Cheetah was able to run 166.7 meters. Usain Bolt was able to sprint 52 meters, while this person, who was only walking at 4 kilometers per hour, moved 5.6 meters. But how far did the snail make it? A grand total of... 6.9 centimeters. Someone give that snail a medal. Here are some more numbers. The moon is orbiting around the Earth at about 3,636 kilometers per hour. 
The Earth and the Moon are orbiting around the Sun at a speed of 107,244 kilometers per hour. Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun, is orbiting at a rate of 172,378 kilometers per hour. The Sun itself, along with the rest of the solar system, is orbiting the center of the Milky Way galaxy at a rate of 729,000 kilometers per hour. But how fast is the galaxy moving? You have to have something to compare it to because everything is relative. Well, compared to cosmic background radiation, which is radiation left from the Big Bang, the galaxy is moving at a rate of 2,100,000 kilometers per hour. The speed of the galaxy still isn't the fastest thing in the universe, though. Any ideas? Here's a hint, you wouldn't be able to see without it. That's right, the fastest thing in the universe is light itself. So how fast does it travel? At 299,792 kilometers per second. Or, if you want a more impressive number, 1,079,251,200 kilometers per hour. Now that's fast. 2.16 billion times faster than that snail. An object traveling at the speed of light would be able to circle the Earth almost seven and a half times in only one second. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the part in the program where it's time to talk about size. Here's our average human again, who is once again 1.62 meters tall, and here's that white-toothed pygmy shrew who is only four centimeters long. How small can we get? Well, Here's a human hair, which has a width of 100 micrometers, or 0 0.0001 meters. It would take 400 human hairs side by side to add up to the length of that shrew. This is a red blood cell. It's about 7 micrometers in diameter, more than 14 times smaller than that hair. Here are the wavelengths for red and violet light, about 750 nanometers and 400 nanometers. As it happens, the wavelength for red light is about 10 times smaller than a red blood cell. Now, you may recognize this structure, it's DNA, our genetic code. It has a width of about 3 nanometers, which means it's about 133 times smaller than the wavelength for violet light. About 10 times smaller than the width of our DNA is this, a carbon atom, which measures 340 pytometers. 10 times smaller than that is a hydrogen atom, measuring about 31 pytometers. A helium atom is slightly smaller at 25 pytometers. The particles that make up these atoms are much smaller than you may think, however. This is the actual size of a proton, one femtometer, 10,000 times smaller than the actual atom itself. And get this, the electrons in atoms are thousands of times smaller than the protons. Here's a chunk of compressed carbon, otherwise known as a diamond. In a diamond, all the carbon atoms are arranged in a very sort of neat formation. If each one of the carbon atom's nucleus were the size of a soccer ball, the neighboring soccer balls would be more than 15 kilometers away. Not only that, the electrons orbiting in between those 15 kilometer spaces would be smaller than gnats. That's right. All matter, the material everything is made of, the building blocks of the universe, is almost entirely 100% empty space. You, me, that whale over there, looks solid enough. In fact, you can walk on them, but particles are still going straight through us. In fact, right now, countless numbers of neutrinos, particles that have no charge, are passing through matter like you and me and the Earth. Remember that this is inside a diamond, one of the densest materials on the Earth, and it's pretty much entirely space, with a few little particles here and there. Keep that in mind, because there's more. Here we are, back with the human and the blue whale. Time to stale up this time. This is the tallest mountain in the world, Mount Everest, standing at 8.8 .8 kilometers and 266 times larger than the blue whale. Nearly 1,450 times larger than the Mount Everest is Earth itself, with an average diameter of 12,756 kilometers. It would take 7,874,074 humans in a straight line, head to toe, to equal the diameter of the Earth. Here are some of the other planets and a moon to compare. Jupiter is the largest of them all, with a diameter of about 142,800 kilometers and a mass that's 318 times that of Earth. It would take about 88,148,148 humans just in a straight line to equal Jupiter's diameter. That's more than twice the entire population of Canada. Jupiter is looking pretty big, right? Believe it or not, the average distance from the Earth to the Moon is more than twice the size of Jupiter, at about 384,400 kilometers. Let me introduce you to something called the Sun. 
It's about 400 times larger than the moon and has an average diameter of about 1,391,000 kilometers. The reason why, to us, it looks about the same size as the moon is because it's about 400 times further away. The sun is also about 333,333 times more massive than the Earth. To give you an idea of how massive the Earth is, it would take 85 sextillion, 285 quintillion, 714 quadrillion, 290 trillion humans to equal the mass of the Earth. That's more than 10 trillion times the world population. And the Sun is 333,333.33 times more massive than the Earth. It most definitely doesn't stop there, though. The average distance from the Earth to the Sun is 149,597,870 kilometers, also known as almost 5 billion blue whales. And the distance from the Sun to the furthest point in Neptune's orbit is 4,536,874,300 kilometers. That can also be measured as about 355,666 Earths, or about 3,261.6 suns. It takes light just over 8 minutes to jet from the Sun to the Earth, and over 4 hours for light to jet from the Sun to Neptune. Going back to the Sun, let's compare it with some other stars. Here's our sun again with a diameter of 1,391,000 kilometers. This is Arcturus, the third brightest star visible from Earth. It has a diameter of about 36 million kilometers, which means it's almost 26 times larger than our star, the sun. Next up in line is the Pistol Star, which has a diameter of about 470 million kilometers, and about 13 times larger than Arcturus. The Pistol Star is incredibly bright and releases as much energy in 20 seconds as our sun does in an entire year. Now on to VY Canis Majoris, the largest star known. It has a diameter of about 2,800,000,000 kilometers, which means it's more than 2,000 times the size of our sun. Just how many humans head to toe in a straight line would be able to equal the diameter of the largest star we know? I'm glad you asked. The answer is 1,728,395,062,000. How many humans to equal its mass? 852 octillion, 428 septillion, 571 sextillion, 400 quintillion. Oh, but wait, it gets better. Remember how fast light goes? Just under 300,000 kilometers in one second? Just over 1 billion kilometers in one hour? How fast do you think light will travel in one year? I'll tell you, it's about 9 trillion, 461 billion kilometers. There's a unit of measurement for this distance, and it's called a light year. Fitting, isn't it? Now it's time to really ramp up the scale. We live in the Milky Way galaxy, which is composed of anywhere between 200 billion and 400 billion stars. The average diameter of the galaxy is about 102,000 light years. Let me just put that in perspective as to how huge it is. Light takes just over 8 minutes to get from the Sun to Earth. If an object were traveling at that speed, it would have to be moving for 102,000 years to cross our galaxy. Our galaxy isn't the only one, though. The Andromeda galaxy is our closest neighbor. It's about twice the size of the Milky Way, measuring over 200,000 light years across. The galaxy Virgo A is about 490,000 light years from one side to the other, and is almost five times larger than the Milky Way, but even this giant galaxy is dwarfed however, by IC 1101, the largest galaxy ever discovered. It has a diameter of about 6 million light years. That's almost 59 times larger than the Milky Way, over 40 trillion times the diameter of our Sun, more than 4.5 quadrillion times larger than the Earth, and in case you forgot, it would take over 7.5 million humans head to toe to equal the diameter of the Earth. The universe, however, isn't just home to one or two galaxies. In fact, it isn't home to just several. It isn't home to hundreds. In fact, it isn't even home to thousands or millions. The universe is home to billions of galaxies, each harboring up to trillions of stars each. So how big is the universe? Well, nobody knows. The universe is actually expanding, so we can't see past a certain point. That point just happens to be about 46.5 billion light years in any given direction, which means that the observable universe has a diameter of about 93 billion light years. That is equivalent to 879 sextillion 873 quintillion kilometers. That means the observable universe is 15,500 times larger than IC 1101, the largest galaxy we know. 
914,500 times larger than our own galaxy, the Milky Way, 693,760,000,000 times larger than our star, the Sun, 75 trillion, 620 billion times larger than Earth, and a grand total of 567 quintillion, 150 quadrillion times larger than a human. So, now you've seen where humans sit in the universe. We're much faster than snails, but much slower than stars. Much larger than atoms, but much smaller than planets. The most important thing to remember, however, is that all the little pieces of data are presented mean nothing if left on their own. They only help us if we look at them relative to something else. That is why perspective is important. It's not only a word. It's a way of looking at the universe around you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, don't forget to keep a sense of perspective.